Dear heavenly and gracious God, Lord, we come to you once again on a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. Lord, once again, thank you for this day. Thank you that it is a day that you have made and that you have so fit to give it to us. Let us enjoy, Heavenly Father. We thank you for it. Lord, we thank you that you watched over all last night and kept us for we realized that we cannot keep ourselves. Lord, we are thankful to be in your sanctuary once again. Lord, we realized this morning that we don't have to be on Mariana Road, Heavenly Father, be in your sanctuary. But, Heavenly Father, the church is inside of us. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We yes. thank you for that right now, Lord. The yes. church is inside of us. Yes. And, Heavenly Father, it shouldn't just show up on Sunday morning. Amen. But, Heavenly Father, the church should show up every day of our lives. Heavenly Father, the Bible clearly tells us that one day is no, important, no more important than any other day to you. Yes. Every day is the same. Uh, Monday is a holy day, Tuesday is a holy day, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, all yeah. of them the same, Father. Yeah. All of our holy days and should be given back to you. Yeah. Dear Father, we are thankful once again for all your graciousness and your kindness, Dear Father. Lord, we are, as I get older, I realize more and more every day that we truly are living on your grace. Lord, we truly are living on your mercy My Lord. that you say is new every single day. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we are thankful once again that our pastor and his wife thank has opened you, up their house thank to you, us, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that. Thank Lord, we take a lot of things for granted, but they don't have to do it, Heavenly Father. But Lord, we are thankful thank for all the time, for all the effort, yes. all the energy yes. that they put into this, Heavenly Father. Thank we thank you for it. Thank and then, Heavenly Father, as I drove up this morning, I saw all your other saints here this morning, Heavenly yes. Father. I saw all the other cars, a yes. lot of cars, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that the people thank still you. have a mind you, to worship you. Yes. We thank you that people, the people still have a mind to honor you, thank to you. give their time to you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, we look around and we realize that yes. many people are just using Corona my Lord, as a my Lord, vacation. My Lord, we know a lot of people just use it as a vacation, dear the Father. But Lord, we are thankful that I look out today, Lord, to see all the other cars in the morning. Lord, we are thankful not only here, but all the other churches who are still going forward, dear the Father, coming together in your name. Dear the Father, as I often say, we look, look around, we see that circumstances changes, all kind of things change, but Lord, we serve a God who changes not. Right. Amen. Lord, you are the same before the corona came, and you are still the same now, dear Father. Amen. So, Lord, Amen. we thank you, Lord. You are mighty then, and you are mighty now. Amen. Lord, you kept us before that, and you are keeping us now. Yes, God. Lord, yes, you are merciful before, merciful before that, and you are merciful now. Yes, Lord. And you are gracious then, and yes, Lord, you are gracious God. now. Yes, so, Lord, yes, we are so glad. Yes. That we serve a God that changes not. Yes. And Lord, I heard the Pastor White this morning say that you are faithful. Mm. Help us to be faithful to you, help Heavenly Father. Yes, help Lord, help us to be faithful. And Lord, we can't do it on, on our own. That's why I ask that you help us. Mm. That you send your Holy Spirit, Lord, to guide us every day, Lord, to keep us strong, to keep us moving in the right direction. Amen. Help us not to be distracted by everything that's going on. We look at the news, and Lord, we see the, all the turmoil going on around the election, all the protests going on, all the stats concerning the coronavirus, dear Father, and we can easily be distracted, easily be distracted. But dear Father, help us to stay focused on you. As the word say, Lord, help us to continue to look to the hill from what's coming our help. And Lord, we have no doubt that all our help come from you. Yes, so dear Heavenly Father, we are thankful once again to be in your sanctuary mm -hmm. on another day that you have made. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we are just thankful. Once again, Lord, we give you this prayer in your son, Jesus the Christ's name. We pray, we thank you, and we do love you. Yes. Amen. 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 Let the say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good all of the time. Amen. And uh, I think I'm going to leave my cap on today. I don't have much on top, naturally, so this cap going to serve me a good purpose today. It's, it's windy, and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Amen. I don't know if all y'all know, but, you know, God watches over us at night. While some of us were sleeping last night, it was storming out here, raining and wind blowing and all kind of stuff was going on, but God protected us, and, uh, and uh, today is a day 
that uh, I, I love these type of days, fall days, leaves blowing and stuff like that. This is my time of the year. And uh, I don't too much, I like heat, but not a whole lot of heat. Amen. And, uh, and that's right because, you know, hell is going to be hot. So it's quite kind of natural that I don't like it. So I try to do my best to stay on my P's and Q's for the Lord. So what we're going to do today, we already told you how much God protect us. If you would, turn with us to John chapter 17, and we're going to read in your hearing, verses 12. And then we're going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. I'm just so glad to see all of you out here today. You didn't have to come, but you did. And you know, God is pleased with that. Amen. Amen. He, want, he wants you to hear what he has to say. And so this is how I read. This is John chapter 17, verses 12. I'm going to read that one first. It says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. All right. Now we're going to ask you to go to uh, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. And this is how it reads. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. I just want to talk to you just for a little while today about God protects us. God protects us. And like I said, he protects us in you know, every aspect of life. God is going to protect us. And God wants to inform his children that Jesus prayer. Verse chapter 17 of John is Jesus' prayer for his disciples. Right, that's right. And God wants to let us know, church, that Jesus' prayer is still valid. He is still interceding for us today. Jesus prayed for all of his followers. While this chapter it, it demonstrates uh, Jesus' love for his disciples, he prayed on, on their behalf for their safety, for their protection. Because he knew that they were going to need it. And we need to uh, realize that God is protecting all who hear and does his will. Now, we go back to that verse, verse 12. It says, this is Jesus talking. I'll be read in your Bible. It says, while I was with them in the world. That's what Jesus said. I kept them in, our, in thy name. Jesus said that while he was walking around with those disciples. He continued to pray for them day in and day out. He said, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. Listen, I say he, he would protect those all who hear and does his will. It was a but in that chapter 12. It said, but the son of perdition. And who is that? Judas. Judas is scary, amen? He was the only one that was lost because he was the betrayer, right? Yeah. He really wasn't a follower of Jesus, amen? But he was a betrayer. Yeah. <clears throat> and he, he, in a semicolon, then he said that the scripture might be fulfilled. See, that was going to happen, amen? He knew that one was going to betray him, amen? And uh, he was going to have to go to the cross to die for all of our sin. But yet, Jesus, knowing all of this that was going on, he still had to intercede for his disciples. Of that day, amen? amen. Amen. So, uh, we should not be living in constant fear, church. Being afraid to live in this world that God has intended for us, amen. See, we can be living in the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Amen. We should live in the world, but not be of the world. Sometimes, uh, we find ourselves, that's why we get so confused, because we find ourselves. Trying to do both. Trying to live in the world and live of the world. I'm talking about Christians now. I'm talking about uh, Christ followers. Amen. We can't do both, church. Because if you do both, 
Of course you'll find yourself being fearful. You, you'll be fearful because you, you're, you're, you're not doing his will. Amen. You, you're doing your own thing. And whenever we do our own thing and it's not of God, then it's got to be of the devil. Amen. Yeah. So this is not God's way to try to do both. Straddle the fence, some may say. You can't play both sides. Uh, you're either going to be um, on God's side or the devil's side. Amen. And most of the time, we're afraid of what people might think or what people might say about us if we don't agree with them. Yeah, we agree with some people because we think that it's going to get out that we disagree with them about a certain situation or we, uh, we, we're just afraid that what, what the community might say or we may get fired or something like that, you know, uh, because of somebody else's uh, wrongdoing. So we, we tend to find ourselves trying to uh, satisfy them instead of God. Amen, if I will. Satisfy them instead of God. But we are God follow. We are Christians. We follow Christ's way. So there's no other way for us to follow but Christ. That's the only way that we can stay in his protection. That's why Judas is carried. He, he uh, ended up the way he did. Amen. He ended up selling uh, Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. But every time that we betray Jesus, betray God, we fall in that same category. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the real deal. Mm -hmm. The real deal. So we can't just go around uh, just agreeing with everybody for everything that they say, or everything that they do, or however they act. We can't agree with everything. Amen? Amen. We are supposed to be Christians. But sometimes we're afraid to speak up or we're afraid to turn down, amen, an uh, ungodly offer. My Lord. Yeah, we're afraid to do that because of what the community might say or what your family might say. But what, what is God saying? Amen. We need to be focused on doing the will of the Lord instead of the will of the people, amen? Now, if the will of the people fall in line with the will of the Lord, then okay, that's, that's good. But if it goes against the grain, church, God suggests us that we don't follow that, but we follow his way. Over in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love and a sound mind. Y'all see that in your Bible? Yes, sir. That's what it says, ain't it? I'm going to read a little bit further because I like what it said. It says, Be not, on the eighth verse, it says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Going down to 1 Tim, uh, 2 Timothy 9, it says, Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. So in other words, if he had given us a, pure, uh, 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 a spirit of power, amen, love, and of a sound mind, then we shouldn't have a spirit of fear because they can't mix. They don't get along with each other, amen? you got to have that power and of love and of a sound mind. And we cannot be ashamed. It says, verse 8, we cannot be ashamed, amen, of the testimony of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, when you agree with someone that's doing wrong, and you know that it's wrong, but you go ahead and, uh, and uh, follow them anyway, then you are ashamed of the testimony of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what it says in the Bible, ain't that right? It says, be that be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prison. That was Paul writing this. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel of the power of God, 
In other words, he didn't say everything's going to be lovey-dovey. There, there are going to be some times, amen, that you might have to get cursed out. There may be some times that you might not be able to go on this trip. Amen? Amen. It may be some times, amen, when uh, people may talk about you. But that'll be all right. They talked about Jesus, too. Throughout his ministry, they talked about him. But they didn't sway his will for the Lord, for, the, for God, because he, he just kept his mind, stayed on, on focus. Amen? I heard somebody saying we need to stay focused. We have a whole lot of distraction these days. From the weather to politics. Come on, preacher. We with you. Amen? Distractions, distractions, distractions. Yes, sir. So we need to, verse 9 says that, who have called us? And called us a holy calling. He called all of us into a holy calling. Not unto our works, according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. It was grace that got us this far, amen? And went, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Ain't that something? Amen. God is good at it. Yes, he is. So we are called, it says that in the verse, we are called to live a holy life by God, amen? amen. So uh, he is our protector. Yeah, if we live according to his will and his way, he's going to protect us. And we shouldn't be afraid, uh, uh, afraid nor ashamed to stand for righteousness. We have to stand for righteousness. All right. Thank you, Lord. No doubt about it. Always. Not sometimes, but always stand for righteousness. We're living in a time uh, right now, a period of time right now where there's all kind of groups and things springing up. Uh, be careful what you join up with. Join the church first. Amen. Do some of the things that, uh, the, get involved in some, some of the positive things that you know the church is doing. How about that? And a lot of times, if we just do that, we'll be busy enough. We won't have time for anything else. Because we are all, we're focused on God. But um, nothing that Satan can do, amen, to cause you to fear. Nothing people can do to you should cause you to fear. Our text tells us that Jesus chose the 12 disciples that, gave, that God gave him, and uh, he also prayed for their protection. Yes, he, did. he did this not one time, but he did it all the time. Church, are we praying for each other? Jesus prayed for them all the time. Thank you, God. I'm praying for the church all the time. We should be praying for each other all the time. We should be watching out for one another Amen. all of the time. Jesus sent these disciples into the world where they would experience difficult times. They went through some dangerous circumstances. But I like what's found in John 17 and 15. Let's go to John 17 and 15. That's good stuff right there. Amen. And this is how it reads. Say, say, I pray not that thou shouldst, shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from all evil. In other words, Jesus didn't pray to God for for, for him to take the disciples out of the world. But he wanted to keep them from all evil. That's what it said, ain't that right? Amen. Jesus interceded for his disciples. Yes, he did. That they would have strong protection from the evil one, from the, from, from the devil. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to point out that Jesus was praying for protection for his true followers. Because I already told you that Judas was the betrayer, right? Yes, sir. Who worked against Jesus. So this prayer of protection would give them the holy boldness they needed to preach God's word. Holy boldness they needed to teach God's word. To carry it 
from village to village, from town to town, from house to house. If you do it the way God tell you to do it, you won't have nothing to worry about. Amen? Yeah, you're going to get cursed out sometime. And some of these guys, even they was uh, stoned. Yeah. 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 We're going to get to that in a minute. Yeah. They went through some harsh situations, harsh words. And sometimes we go through that too when we tell the truth. Yeah, start telling the truth mm -hmm. if you're not already doing it. You'll find out where people stand with you. For these disciples knew that even death couldn't really harm them because they had Jesus Christ on their side. But what was really important for them was the assurance of their spiritual safety. That's what we have to, have to know now. It's about our soul, church. It's about our spirit. Yeah, this physical body hurt. And one of the biggest lies that ever was told, all I think, is a phrase, I would say. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Or will never hurt me. That's, that, was, that was a lie to me. I don't know about you. Amen. Sticks and stones do break your bones. And words do hurt. Amen? But it, it, it shouldn't hurt your soul. If you are protected from, by God, it shouldn't hurt your soul, amen, because you are his. And he's going to protect you through everything, amen. He's he going to protect that soul. So make no difference what somebody may do to your body. Where is your soul going to rest at? This body is just temporary anyway, right? But our soul lives on forever. Yes, and ever and ever. Eternity. Yes, mm. It just... Where is your soul going to reside after it leaves this body? That's what we need to be focusing on. If we want to live in God's protection, then we have to live a righteous life. We have to live according to the will of God. We, have to, we, we can't live in fear, amen? But we have to stand for right and righteous. We need to, we need to be like that. I always like to use the... Uh, the tree planted by the rivers of water because the roots ran deep and, and, and uh, whatever wind may blow, that tree going to stand there. Amen. It ain't going to sway in way, any way and fall down and all that, but it's going to stay right there. And that's how uh, God wants us to be. He wants us to be firm. He wants us to be uh, just focused on him and his will. And that's how we get his protection, church. John 17 and 20. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I like this one too. Yeah. This one, this yeah. is one for us right here. Thank you, God. 17 and 20. Look, y'all skip down there. He says, Neither pray I for these alone. He's talking about those current yeah. disciples. Yeah. Yeah. But for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Mm. So, in other words, he was talking about all of us too. Jesus was praying for us. Thank that ought to make you feel good right there. He said, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which, I sh which shall believe on me through their word. Jesus didn't leave us out. He didn't leave us out of his prayer. So we have that same protection that those other disciples had back years and years ago. Ain't that something? God is good, ain't he? I'm so glad he didn't leave me out. That put a smile on my face because he didn't leave me out. John 10, 28 and 29. Let's go there. John 10. John 10. I got to find it too. John 10 verses 28 and 29. You got that? Yes, sir. All right. And this is how it reads. And this is Jesus talking again. And I give unto them eternal life. Eternal life. And they shall never, I repeat, never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That said a lot to me. But look at verse 29. My father which gave them to me, 
talking about his disciples, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So in other words, God got us, church. He got us. Can't nobody pluck us out of his hand. Thank you, God. Can't nobody pluck us out of uh, Jesus' hand. Can't nobody take us away or harm us or hurt us. He got us in the palm of his hand. There it is right there. It's in red in my Bible. Amen. So uh, the Apostle John encouraged us in 1 John 4 and 4. Some of you may know this. It's a popular scripture. And I think I read this not long ago. But the Apostle John encouraged us and says that ye are, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we got something. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So we should not ever be afraid of what Satan or people, amen, may say, do, or talk about you, amen, or, or, or allow you. As long as you stay in the truth, you should be all right. God is our protector. And he wants y'all to know that. He wants us to know that. Wherever we go, whatever we say or do, that's in the will of the Lord, God has got our back. So don't be afraid, church. Sometimes we have to speak out on certain things. Sometimes we may have to speak up sometimes. But the most important thing is that you live right. You do what is right. Amen? Amen? So we can have absolute confidence in knowing this. We can, no doubt about it, because it's been, most of this stuff has been read, most of these words have been read in my Bible. That means that Jesus has said them. Now, we should know that all will not accept the words of God. Amen? Let's go to let's go to uh, First John. We about to be finished, but I, I want to go to First John one more time, uh, chapter four, mm -hmm. and uh, verse five and six. Because everyone is not going to accept the word of God. Verse five say, "They are of the world; therefore speak they of the world, and the world hears them." Talking about people of the world. But he's talking about us in verse 6. We are of God, church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He that knoweth God hears us. What? Yes. He that is not of God heareth not us. Yes, God. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Woo. Ain't that something? Yes. So we, mm. you know, everybody's not going to listen to you because they're of the world. They don't want to hear I got something. Yes. And so when we have people who don't want to hear what God has to say about a situation, then it's, it's quite obvious they like they want to lean toward the way of the world, church. They don't want to, they don't want to follow God. They don't want to follow Christ. And to me, if you're not following Christ, that's a definition of a non-Christian. Because a Christian is one who follows Christ. Do, who do what Christ do, amen, or, or at least even try, amen. Some, some people not even trying. Ain't that something? But we need, to, we need to realize that he who is in, your, in you is greater than he that is in the world. And we can believe this because this is a promise from God. And I want to let you know today that what you do, listen to this, what you do Reveals what you believe. All right. My Lord. All right, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound on now. Yeah. yeah. That's the truth. That's the word. Whatever you do reveals what you believe. Because if you do his will, you got to be of him, right? Yeah. If you do what you want to do, then you got more belief in yourself than you do of God. I did something. If we're living in fear, 
anxiety, life filled with all kind of uh, nervousness and all that kind of stuff, then we may be lacking the confidence of God's prote protection. We should not never lack the confidence of God's protection. Makes no difference what we're going through in life. Now God wants us to live a life with confidence. He wants you to know that he is there for you all of the time. He wants you to know that Jesus is constantly interceding for us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank and by knowing this, that ought to increase our faith. By hearing this word that he has put forth today, this should be increasing our faith in him, knowing that he got our back. Amen. And you know, he loved us so much that he did give us Jesus. And I'm glad that he did. We think we have to go through a lot for telling the truth. Think about how much Jesus went through for telling the truth. Or for speaking out or living righteous. Think about, think about that. How he had to hang there on that cross. Even before they got him to the cross, how they beat him up. Back was just looking like ground beef. Whips all over it. Pressed the crown of thorns in his skull. Blood, I can just imagine blood streaming down his face. Like that's something. Bearing his own cross. Marching them up the hill. Marching, actually, marching from before all of this, they marched them all around trying to get somebody to, uh, mm -hmm. to validate the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. How they spat on him. How they pierced him in the side when he was hanging on that cross. How he hung there from the sixth to the ninth hour. If he did all that for us, I know we ought to be able to obey what he tells us to do. But you know what he did? He got up on that third day after they put him in that tomb. Right. He got up. Come on, preacher. And he got up with all power, church. And that's what I like about it. So he sacrificed his own son who had did no wrong for all of the world who had did everything wrong. Ain't that something? Yes, for we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No doubt about that. But we should know that Jesus, God, is our protector. And Jesus is praying for us daily throughout the day for our protection. And in my closing, I want to read to you a song, very familiar passage of song, Psalm 91. This is one that we can put in our hearts, church. And it begins, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by the day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, and keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, 
lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's what we need to keep with us right there, church. Amen. Psalm 91. Amen. Because we should not be living a life in fear. But we should be living a life of power, love, and of a sound mind. Amen. And the way that you get that is by being obedient to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Almighty God. So I want to open the door of the church today, letting you know that God is our protector. And if you need protection, you ain't going to get no better protection than God. Because he is the protector. If you're looking for a church today, looking for a church home, now's your time. If you're looking for a savior who will never leave you nor forsake you, you can come now. And I like to say, if you want to enter into heaven, you must go through Jesus first. He said, I am the door. So there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. You got to get there that way. God is our protector. Amen. We see that there is none today. We've extended the privilege of the open door of the church. Your blood is not required by our hand. But I always like to say that as long as blood is running warm in your vein, it's not too late. Not too late. But when you're dead, you can't speak for yourself, and you haven't accepted the Lord and Savior as your Christ. Then, sadly, I would say that you would not reside in heaven. That's what the Bible say. Amen? Amen. 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 God's word for God's people. Amen. We thank God for that message, and we pray that you are blessed by it. If you would like to contact us, our contact information is on the screen. Feel free to call, email, or text. Finally, if you would like to give to this ministry, you may do so um, by mailing your gift, um, or you may do so electronically. To mail your gift, please send um, your gift to Post Office Box 5207, Holly Springs, Mississippi 38634. Or if you would like to give electronically, please send a text to Sister Estella Dean at 901-831-9224. In that text, includes your name. Indicate whether you're giving a tithe or an offering, the amount you wish to give, and your email address. You will then receive an invoice that has a secure link in which you can pay your um, offering. Thank you, God bless you, and God keep you.